Hello and welcome to episode 180 of Comedians Interviewing Musicians. It is wild to even think that we are getting up there in numbers. It is crazy cool. Thank you so much for all your support. My name is Becky Jo Neal. This is my beautiful co-host, Kim Stacey. Fucking vibing. <laughs> she be vibing. And we she are joined by a wildly talented uh, rapper, San Antonio uh, baby uh Chris Conde, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me. No, thank you so much for being here. This is, yeah. we uh, get a lot of different kind of artists on this show and it is always a pleasure to have somebody that has a fresh, interesting outlook on life and your music is so fun and we're so excited to bring it to our audience. So thank you again for joining us. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, definitely. Um, we here at the podcast would like to thank our patrons and sponsors for all of your obvious continued support. It's been quite a ride the last year and a half, but with us, yeah, <laughs> is I'm ready to get off. <laughs> we are done. We have been on this ride thirty thousand times. We're getting up is thank you. I'm ready for a funnel cake and a nap. Is what? Oh, uh, yes. God, together like napping with funnel cake in your mouth. What about mm-hmm. a nap? on a funnel cake anyway thank you so much to our patron <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate you and tell your friends because we've been doing this show for a long time there are there's hours hours of entertainment on our patreon so uh be sure to tell your friends click on over there cimp.live we love you we mean it and if you uh, feel so inclined uh during the show if you would like to tip our artist chris you can tip at paypal chris.n Conde, C-O-N-D-E at Gmail, or you can Venmo at Chris Conde, the rapper. Uh, and wait, do we, do we figure out your favorite emoji? What's your favorite emoji, Chris? Oh, just do the unicorn. Oh, the unicorn, hands down. So if oh. you uh, want to tip Chris, uh, be sure to use the music first hand, fist hand emoji that we always use and the unicorn so that Chris can keep track of all of the beautiful tips that come their way. And uh, Kim, oh, I clicked a button. I thought it was going to be my volume again. Kim was going to make fun of me and I was going to go, dang it. Uh, no, press the wrong button. Uh, but Chris, what have you been up to the last year and a half? We know you have an album release coming out. Uh, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I moved back to Austin. I lived here back in 07. I was here for a few years um, back then and was in San Antonio the last 10 years. And so um, I was the music editor for the San Antonio Current. It's kind of like San Antonio's version of like the Chronicle. And so after when COVID hit, um, you know, much like the Chronicle, it's supported by, you know, uh, by ads and, you know, events, et cetera, you know? So since nothing was happening, um, they let go of like 90% of the people. So um, I was like, tight, <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so um, I ended up um, writing and recording an album um i basically was just like uh needing money to pay rent and so i did i did like hundred dollar verses and did enough to like pay rent for a few months and then that sort of like built momentum into like writing you know my album um which i wasn't planning on doing i had released an ep like in jan in december of the past year so like i was booked like through October, like I'd already been on tour, like on, you know, Pacific, Pacific Northwest. I'd already been booked in New York, you know, I was going to, you know, anyways. And so, um, so yeah, I ended up moving back here and finishing the record and yeah. So it's been a lot, but I'm glad to be back in Austin and, you know, like I love it here. My sisters have been here for like 20 years. And so, yeah, it's very familiar. It's weird post apocalypse. I know. Are we post? I don't know. We're still, you know, it's so yeah. weird. But I'm glad to be we're here. Pre-post. Right. We're yeah. Pre-post. We're pre post op. Um, and <laughs> it's great. And I'm excited. And there's a wonderful community here. And being like, I love being like the weirdo, like eccentric, like what I do, I think fits so well because like, because I think Austin accepts that, you know, and like, I love San Antonio and I am grateful for the time that I had there, but like, like the city like loves and cherishes music in a way that is different from a lot of different cities that I've been in, you know what I mean? And so um, the community here is 
amazing and fantastic and i'm grateful to be here so in a nutshell that's basically what i've been up to <laughs> Oh, we're so glad a lot. Yeah, yeah. So glad. Yeah. And so it's true. The pre post, the pre post aspect of it is uh, one of those things where when the city is designed, built and supported by the art in its community, when we can't see it, it feels like we're being, yeah, it's might as well be being cut off from water or something. <laughs> this this yeah. is what the city does. Yeah. Be able to do what they do. Yeah, exactly. I every time I play up here, like just the way that I mean, I've played shows from New York to Seattle, like Midwest, and the way that that sound engineers even talk to you here, like and make sure that you know what's up and they know what's up. It's like they you can tell that Austin cares about like like this person on sound wants to make sure that your sound is good because they care about the sound coming. You know, like there's it's there's a lot, you know, that says a lot to me. And I've really always passionate here. Yeah, that's something that stayed with me, you know, since since I first started playing shows up here. So yeah, everyone's got something, got a got a horse in the race here. It's yeah. It's <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, as Midwestern and honky tonk as that shit sounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Down here got a horse in the race, y'all. Everybody got a horse in the race. <laughs> it's true. Also, Kimmy, are you wearing a jumpsuit? Thank you so much for asking, Becky Jo. Yes, I am. I am wearing a full denim jumpsuit. Who gave you for how much it was? Oh, it's five dollars. Thank you so much. Goodwill? No, Walmart. <laughs> she said, "I see. I see your second." I'm not hand. afraid to be that bitch. <laughs> you look like. It. Sexiest king of <coughs> impression I've ever seen in my life. I'm here for it. Uh, well, we, uh, this, we, again, thanks so much to our patrons and sponsors, and thanks to everyone who bought $100 verses from Chris so that they could make this album a possibility. Thanks to everybody. That's so awesome. Like thriving through a pandemic is true. Heads up. My verses are not $100 anymore. So that deal has long since expired since the new year. And thank you. Okay. Now they're $500. <laughs> yes. I want to write $100 fortune cookies. <laughs> you should do it. I mean, I know I can't write a full verse, but I can just be like, you know. Yeah. And there's some Turn around to us like who'll be like, yeah, we could sell $100 fortune cookies at our white people sushi place. We could do that. Yes. I mean, call me. <laughs> do it. I'm. I support you. Anything is possible. I mean, Anything I tried possible. to paint a vagina the other day, <laughs> and it looks like a walnut or like a peach pit. That's your fortune. That's what you should write. You just write like what you did. Your vagina a is a peach pit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. That's beautiful. Wait, don't wait. Is peach pits or or? What's the what's the fruit that has uh, poison in it, dude? Yeah. That's sick. I love her. Yeah. No. It's like it's like if a vagina and a carnivorous plant had a baby. <laughs> I like love something it. from like Jurassic Pokemon. Park. Yes, Jurassic Park Pokemon hybrid. I don't know. I'd wear that on a t-shirt. I would too. <laughs> yeah. This little, this little vagina peach man. Yeah. Hey. It's like, yeah. It's a doorway to another okay. dimension. Thank yes. you. Exactly. It looked like it looked like I was gonna like walk in and it was gonna be Alice in Wonderland. She was gonna like have Beetlejuice. 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 <laughs> My oh, vagina okay. is Beetlejuice. <laughs> I mean, there's a corner of the internet for everybody, baby. You just find your you find your zhuzh. Um, <laughs> we are we are gonna hear the first song from the lovely and talented Chris Conde, the rapper. Uh, you're having a good time. The Venmo and PayPal is in a ticker underneath this uh, screen. So you can find, use the fist bump and the unicorn emoji. Probably uh, under our breasts. Yeah, technically under Kim's boobs. If you can find, yes, she's holding them up for you so you can see. So you can see. Let me get them out of the way so they're not. Yeah, it's more clear if I lift them up. Yeah. Uh, Enjoy the first song, y'all. We'll be back in a little bit with some uh, more fun and games. Enjoy. Riding on my bicycle 
go from work, handshaking, head hurts, mom flirting with the idea of hurting myself with poison, noise and static voice to misdirect my choices, just the voices whisper in my ears softly, I long speak a drug to grip my wallet and toss me across the last sea of hopelessness, but I hope this gets better cause I know that it's killing me when I need to fill my inner to the ceiling with something that's gonna make me feel sweet, feeling me, insanity had left me, lost and naked, vacant, spiritually bankrupt when I make it, take this obsession from me, I wanna run free and let the spirit sunbeams come freely unto me, let the sun scream from a rusty bee and heart come from me, but they've been just a teeny spark, please, I'm dying here, I'm writing dear drama, this is the smear, and not fair, I severed all clear tracks for trains of thought, out of here, save me, God, I can hear the tiptoeing walk of the reaper near, not thinking clear, and if I drink this beer, I really think my fears will manifest themselves, hell spells will well, then I'll be gelled in tears, kill it, the toxic thought process, got my conscience filled with all kinds of knives, it's the kind of constant, the cons that the others are stopping, I want to get under myself, but it's myself that I'm locked in. Step outside of a circle, repeating, feeding on your life, yeah. Step outside of a circle, repeating, feeding on your life, yeah. Huh. <clears throat> Sorry, just getting over being sick. Yeah, yeah. I am just a combination of decisions driven by my self will incisions in the mid with the crisp glitter and the pre is a decision listen cause I'm spitting as a witness to this schism between the self and the system I'm walking line but around but it's time and I find a witness so listen up cause I'm putting rhymes in your cup I'm always I'm lining it up so drink it up and get a glimpse of the spirit moving and grooving and not losing not losing my time getting my high spit out the food up the suit up grow up throw up things not the screw up too drunk throw up things I'm a new creation the oldest soul guy I don't wanna hold on like that and I go fine I roll on like dice in the sidewalk I put my bike next to a mic so it's amplified when I talk, I miss a man saying get free. I live free from the things that have made me sickly. And it's hand with a damaged plan that would lift me. I put the service to flourish and to get rid of these crazy ways of flipping, breaking out of a system, breaking out of a crystal, crystal, I'm with that mission. Cause it could buy this, cause my mission is to be fit so I can shoot the blind force of intervention of the spiritual gift with the miracle, especially if it rests in the tenant of irritable. Here I go in a row with a syllable, uncontrollable, literal, I'm a fool when these phone flows like a wall for ya. Step outside of the circle, repeating, beating on your life, yeah. Step outside of the circle, repeating, beating on your life, Yes. Uh, oh, Scott Collins is on. He's already commenting. Bless you, Scott Collins. Uh, Scott, you better stay tuned because you might 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 be mentioned later. Just just hang on, uh, Scotty. Uh, <laughs> this is our segment of the show where Kim gets to do what she wants. Yay! Yeah. No consequences. <laughs> there, and the jumpsuit comes off. We uh, <laughs> talked after this. We're nope. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Facebook kicked us off, but Twitch kept us. OnlyFans sponsors us. OnlyFans. Thank you. Um, I have so many uh, questions, and I just have to try to figure out which one I'm going to do. Um, okay. So your performance style is just, like, so free and unapologetic, and I just uh, I want to eat your performance. I just love it so much. I didn't know what you were going to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat your <laughs> Because then I called the cops. That's cool. <laughs> I've been watching your performances all night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, are there other like artists that you admire and not so much like embodying your style, but kind mm. of keep it near and dear to your heart? Yeah. You know, like, um, like I know that Madonna was like a huge, like, my whole thing was like, I remember like n- n- no shade to, to Jay-Z, but I remember like going to ACL and watching Jay-Z and I'm like, I hope I'm never this boring. <laughs> I was alive. 
You know what I mean? And like Jay Z is one of the most amazing rappers of all time, right? Like sick he's put his work you know what i mean like dude is amazing but i'm just yeah. like i don't want to just walk around and maybe when you're jay-z you can do that but i'm just like i don't ever want to be like just walking around and like you know what i mean like i want to be able to like yeah. like like give you entertainment you know and i've had so many different um like like personifications of like chris conde like as a full band i used to do like you know, I used to play banjo and rap with like a harmonica and had like three parts, har- three part harmonies and like, you know, this five, six piece band. And then I've done like three piece bands and like, uh, but, you know, lately I've just been doing just like just me. And I'm like, I want to be able to like, you know, give you like, you know, the just an experience, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I mean, like, you know, I, um, Marilyn Manson was a huge influence on me. I'm like, it's, I've, you know, like not been listening to that, especially since just what's happened recently with them. I'm just like, that's fucking terrible. Um, But like just entertainers that like go over the top, you know what I mean? Like, you know, even they, you know, like Michael, (laughs) all these canceled entertainers. I just like, (laughs) but I mean, like, but I mean, like I wanted to. You're redoing, you're making it better. You know what I mean? But like taking yeah. like the energy of like Michael Jackson and like right. you know, Marilyn Manson and like Madonna and like, you know, um, Nine Inch Nails and, um, yeah. you know, like Gigi Allen, just like all of these, like, you know, and then mixing it with like, I'm, you know, wearing an Atlanta sports show. I went to the Atlanta show, you know, like, and just like, I was just like, <laughs> I was like leaving that show crying and I'm like, she's a gift. <laughs> Oh, no, I was like, her is, number yeah. one listener um, in 2020 during the pandemic. She's the only thing I listened to. And like Spotify after was like, your most listened to artist uh, was Lannis Morissette. And you were her number one fan. And I was oh like, my God. <laughs> yes, that I makes mean, sense. <laughs> like, I just I just remember thinking, like, if I could like watching so many people just like sing to this to her songs and like right there's something about like i want to be able to do that like i want to be able to like let my music be this um symbiotic experience where like i write out and perform the things that i needed to go through for my own healing that gives somebody else the permission to heal themselves or to ask for the help that they yeah. need to go through the healing you know what i mean because it's like and I just don't, you know, and like, yeah, I rap about a lot of different stuff, you know, and like some of it's tongue in cheek and braggadocious. But at the end of the day, it's like it all comes back to being like, you know, we are full, fully form, formed, continuing to heal people, like de- learning how to deal with trauma, you know, masquerading as humans, right. you know, as adults, but are just children with trauma. You know what I mean? And like and so my music is there's a lot about that, you know, a lot of it's about, you know, overcoming drug addiction and internalized homophobia and, you know, fat phobia. And, um, and so you, when I see these eccentric entertainers growing up and, you know, watching like, you know, like I said, Madonna and, um, other artists, like I want, I, I I wanted to embody that myself, you know, and being like, you know, mix of, of like, like fuck you let's heal together right like you're you're you know? the, what you're doing is you're you're also you're connecting you're putting out a connection and then um you're but you're also making an experience so this is something like that when i when i leave a show like you were saying with alanis um you're 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 feeling something and then you're also almost feeling like a weight off you because mm. you feel this connection that you're saying i'm not alone here is somebody who put exactly what i'm feeling to words and then i just connected with them with being in person and feeling that energy right like more of a dog. <laughs> but yeah i just i was just like that's great yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was yeah. Like, and if I could snap, fuck. <laughs> you know, we're crying, yeah. and it's still uh, it's just awesome. I love it so much. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. So I think there's, I my artists growing up taught me just to like be my unabashed self, you know. And yeah. when I 
first started writing music of when I first got sober back in 2014, like um, all I could really write about was like what it was like being a meth user <laughs> and an alcoholic. It's like I had survived something so traumatic. Right. And so I was just like, does anybody really want to hear this though? Yeah. And then I remember started playing shows and it really, I remembered like, it didn't really matter what I was writing about as long as it was coming from an authentic place. And I was yeah. like writing good music. Like someone was going to like people, like the audience was going to respond to that. And right. so I, re- so I, I just like felt like I just found this magical key where I'm like, oh shit, like if you just keep it 100% authentic and you write about wherever the fuck you are at and like get scary and get, you know, deep, like we, it, it, you will create beautiful, beautiful shit. And that's just what, you know, continue to happen. And half of, you know, like, and so I just, when pandemic hit and I was full of fear and I was just like writing so much, that's kind of what this record and Gulf of the Marvelous Decay turned into. It was like- right the trauma of like being a queer person being Mexican um, living in Texas during the Trump administration and like having parents telling me to vote for Trump and not understanding their own privilege and my own trauma. And like, it just uh, so many things. And so it was just like, it was just like the, it was like the right moment to be like, okay, to continue yeah. that, down that sort of, corridor of like authenticity of like okay here's gonna be some really uncomfortable things i'm gonna talk about and like it's gonna be on my album and okay yeah and you know what though this it's another connection to comedians is that that's kind of where comedy comes from it comes from trauma and it comes from taking those things and putting them in a light rather in a dark way and Also during the pandemic, like how many like TikTok and all that shit, how that blew up of just people being like pandemic, be like COVID's like, and everyone's, oh, that's so funny. Yes. That's how I feel. That's trauma, folks. Yeah. It's literally what we went through is trauma. And now a comedian is putting a spin on it for you to laugh at it and accept that it's happened and you can move on and grow from it. And we don't live, we don't live necessarily in a, like, luckily in the United States, for the most part, there are obviously people that are bigoted and homophobic and transphobic and terrible. But for mm-hmm. the most part, we don't live in a society in America anymore where you have, to, you have to martyr yourself to be visible. Right. There's an important yeah. conversation that needs to be had with the people who are out and visible. And I, you were interviewed with this incredible, uh, I am completely forgetting which article it was. I read so many today, but you were talking <laughs> about how, um, a young queer person came up to you after the show and said, I'm not ready to come out yet, but you inspire me. And you were like, there's a community here waiting for you when you're ready. Right. No pressure like those. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be a situation where you're going to get canceled by primetime anything for being who you are anymore. Right. If anything, it's more important to stay as visible as humanly possible so that other people can find themselves in that. Visible. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it is different for. Um, the it gets. I think it's different for trans women and mm-hmm. safety when that. And I think there there's like there's some nuance there that needs to get um addressed and like un, un you know unraveled a little bit too. Mm-hmm. But like at the end of the day, it's like the more that we can all continue to be our authentic selves, the more it's about education, you know, because yes. like, it, it's about like, if, if someone is, people are afraid cause they don't, they, they don't know what this is or they're like, you know um, I remember my parent, when I first came out, my, I came out in 1999 um, and my mom was like, are you sure? And I was like, pretty sure. <laughs> you know, like, what did you say? It was like, it's the face. Do you know anybody with a gay face? I don't yeah. know. Because also, if you have a gay face, that doesn't ever die. No one's yeah. ever like, remember you, all the women you slept with in college? I wasn't. A f-. No, they will use whatever to hurt you. Yeah. yeah. I think my looking back, you know, because I, I used to have a resentment towards that. My parents for a long time because of that. And I remember thinking like, you know what? It was the 90s still like legitimately. And it's like HIV was still happening. It's yeah. still happening today, but it's like. You know, today we have, you know, a lot uh, we have, you know, um, prep and we have a lot of amazing 
um, amazing, uh, you know, medicine that keeps people um, alive, you know, and, and, you know, living with HIV and protecting people from HIV. But back then it was not the case. And it was like, you know, and so I think there was a lot of fear because they were just like, you're going to get HIV and die. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And so that was like the, the narrative that, you know, and so I think the same thing with like, you know, people, the, the narrative has been conditioned to us by, you know, Maury. And it's like, is she a woman or a man? And so, and they only see, and so like young trans people, young queer people or young femme, you know, uh, people who are like trying to find their identity are, you know, like are figuring that out. And then they're, you know, the parents are just like, oh, you know, like the only, the only reference they have is like a hooker, you know, or somebody, yeah. which, you know, which, which to, even then is it's like nuance and it's like sex work is okay. You yeah. know, and it, it's like, there's, there's, there's so much that is conditioned that to us that is like, these, these are all bad things. And these are all going to be terrible things for you to like, you know, so if you identify with any of them, you're going to die, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, no, you're not, you know what I mean? No. And so at the end of the day, it, it comes back to education, which, you know, um, I've met a friend recently um, and they're queer and they, you know, are a librarian in a uh, local Austin elementary school. And I'm just like, that's so sick because I love seeing other queer adults growing up. You know, yeah. I'm just like, oh, you're wearing a rainbow. That's cool. I feel safer. Even yeah. so, you know what I mean? Just like knowing that like my photography teacher, like in, you know, when I lived in Japan, you know, like knowing that he was gay was like, and it was helpful for, in my head. I was just like, yeah. okay, I'm not like the most, I'm not alone, you know? Cause yeah. back then I was told to break up with my boyfriend, you know, like, cause like it would look bad on my stepmom if they found, if like somebody found out that, you know, I was dating a guy just like, cause crazy. it was her decision for sure. <laughs> right. And so yeah, my stepmom made me do it. Yeah. We've come a long way for sure. But I think like, it's just continuing to like, at the end of the day, you know, like living your most authentic self um, is very rewarding. Um, there are consequences to it, but there's an amazing community that um, that will love and support you. So if you're out there listening right now and you're like, you know, you don't know what to do, like, please talk to somebody that you know, like, uh, you know, you can message me directly if you'd like, um, or you can talk to somebody that you know that may be dealing with something similar or has gone through something, but please like, you deserve, you are, you are worthy of living an amazing life. And um, I hope that you reach out to somebody because you're worth, you're worth living and you're wonderful and you're beautiful. Damn it. What time is it? I'm already <laughs> bawling. Oh my God. Well, I do want to say just like the fact that this is just like perfect timing in my life. Um, I have recently kind of come out um, a bisexual oh, yeah. and uh like this it, it means a lot and it was like going through all of your stuff and reading it and how open you are and talking about it it's just because you know I've been going back and forth about it, like well I'm 31 am I too old to come out like you know all that ridiculous stuff in your head right. of not that anybody has said it but it's something someone in my head is saying That's your internalized thing. homophobia yep hello <laughs> i grew up in a cult um <laughs> the adventist is a bitch sorry don't add a seven day adventist yeah. on twitter no <laughs> yeah because they have twitter yeah um but yeah it's just like kind of that you know there's a community and i am accepted like it doesn't matter you can be 85 and come out you yeah. know it's never too late to realize your true authentic self and that's what i've been i just have been feeling so fucking happy lately that i have found Good. the missing piece and it was like a realization like oh shit yeah i was there the whole time because i was i <laughs> came out to my brother on his birthday happy birthday i'm cheap <laughs> and so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh, little like, sister that's the most gay that is the most gay shit ever though <laughs> oh you're getting married i'm gay <laughs> happy birthday i'm gay, gay. Yes. happy birthday no i mom. like women <laughs> Just, but he you know and we had a wonderful conversation and i 
I knew that my family was going to accept me no matter what. You know, I was high on a beach with my mom and said, what if I were to tell you that I liked women? And she'd be like, okay. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Shock me. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> She's like, Kimberly, I'm not shocked yet. <laughs> like everything you've done prior to this, not shocked. And so like my brother was, you know, he, he said, oh, well, you know what? I'm not surprised. I was like, was there something that I'm giving off? Like, I don't know. She's wearing something. a denim jumpsuit. Lately. I was just gonna- wearing a gay Mario. Well, right now. she knows how to change a tire and she does wear pants a lot. Be like, so- I'm pretty sure she owned an Indigo Girls record back in the oh, day. She-, <laughs> she was Alana Morissette's top listener on Spotify oh, in 2020. Of course she gay. <laughs> She sings come to my window in her sleep. <laughs> I think she <laughs> might be. Um, but I just wanted to touch upon that and say that thank you for your, your you're not crowning yourself as an advocate and being like, do as I do and say and all that stuff. But like I want you to know that you are a role model to people and mm-hmm. in not in a pressure way, it's just that you being so open about who you are and being so warm and saying it's, this is, this is us. You're here. Um, I want to thank you for that. Cause I think that that's uh, amazing. for sure. Thank you. And yeah. you know, like, I think there's, oh gosh, there's been so many people who have like loved me until I was able to love myself, you know, and I didn't before I knew what the word the term internalized homophobia meant before I knew, you know, any uh, before I was at where I'm at today, which is an amazing and miraculous place. And I think I, I, I've it's yeah, but thank you. And just know that it's like it's there has been so many people who have came before me and so many people who have loved me and have like cried with me and it's yeah you know like the the world can be like a really ugly place but then sometimes like I do believe that they're I don't know if I believe in God or like a czar of the heavens or but I definitely think that there's some in weird ways miraculous things that happen where I wake up undeserving of like you know things and there and I will and I find amazing beautiful people around me loving me and supporting me and like walking me through my trauma you know and so like i don't know how about how all that works i just know that like i when i learned when i came to the point of like figuring out that writing music was like what i wanted to do and like i saw it impacting people and saw it giving permission to like to people to do the things that i was talking about in my music it was just like this is it this I have found exactly what I want to do you know and so it was just like I'm so grateful that it's like happening you know so thank you for telling me that uh well before we uh go to a couple more songs I just wanted to get this out and I want to know just like give me a taste of it you had a picture of you um that was kind of like titled that bitch and it's it's there's a very sweet and kind caption underneath. But what I want to know is where the fuck did you get that Honda tube top? Cause it's fantastic. <laughs> and your outfits are like, like more than chef's kiss. I want, I just want to know like, where are you getting these? Chef's orgasm. Like, yes. Uh, um, thank you. I was at, Buffalo Exchange in San Antonio. Loving it. Going and I was right just now. like going through the tops as one does. <laughs> and I was like, is this a like legit Honda? Like who? And like get this. It was actually like Forever 21 did a line of like Honda. Yes, like, come like, on, NASCAR mama. Yeah. I was just like, who would have who like I mean, so it wasn't surprising because I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of like, wear whatever you want. But I was like, this is risky for me. Like, I don't know if I could pull this off. And I'm just like, actually, no, let's just do it. You did. And but- with the fucking pants <laughs> and the like, belt, the boot. Race. <laughs> like, it's so kind of good. Like, it was like, who, who buys our cards? And someone's like, bitches that shop at Forever 21. And like, deal. Yeah. 
I'm just deal. like, when I saw it, it was like Forever 21 and Honda. I was just like, how? They like, partnered. I'm like, cool. That's cool. amazing. I'm down, I'm down for the collab. But yeah, no. I, and gosh, yeah. And that little caption, I was just like, I don't know. Like, I'm so grateful. Like, I've been I've been trying to be so many different. I've been trying to be straight and, you know, s- straight, white, skinny and all these different things that I can never really, you know, and I'm just like, I'm just it tired. Sounds like a lot of things that aren't fun. Yeah. <laughs> like being, you know, like, being is boring, being straight yeah. is boring. Yeah. And like, and, and, and I just realized I'm just like, I don't, I'm, I don't want to be, I'm so, I'm, I love lo- like figuring out and like learning how to love yourself is the most like amazing yeah. thing you can give to yourself. And oh, so, like, hell yeah. Like when you're feeling yourself like in an outfit and like, like fucking feel like take that selfie and post it and be like, yes. I'm be like, I'm that bitch because you're that bitch too. Sue from Walmart. <laughs> I feel the Walmart amazing. bisexual, damn it. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it. And it has pockets. Come it fight a pockets. bitch. Where are you going to carry the weight of the straight world? Okay. You gotta have pockets. Oh my God. <laughs> I love how pockets is like we've been so conditioned by the patriarchy. Thank you. Like them that like pockets is like we're excited for. It's like, like oh why do meal. I have to buy pockets? A whole meal, you know? Yeah. Like, Daddy, let me carry my phone today. What? Yeah. Ew. No, no. yeah. Another classic make us buy pockets, like fucking purses and shit yeah. like that. Be like, Our just put them. Just sew them on. Although it is, I had one uh, men's rights activist say, well, sometimes our suit pockets are sewn together. I was like, you know, your mom was cutting that with a seam ripper. It's a true pocket, you dipshit. It's a pocket. You, you just don't know how to use a they seam. They had a Target. They had these shorts. And I was like, oh, they're only $12. This is so cute. They didn't have fucking pockets. Then you look to the right and there were shorts there for $15 with pockets. I was like, well, I got to pay extra for a fucking pocket. <laughs> What? <laughs> I got them because fifteen dollars for shorts is still a good deal. Yeah. The the gay agenda is pockets. And I was That's pissed. That's All it. right, I need some songs to soothe my soul. <laughs> 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 I need a soul soother. Uh, I'm doing two more songs. Yes, yeah. back to back. Don't talk to us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> don't talk. Because I'll be here crying and I can't help you. <laughs> Give it up for Chris. <laughs> she went mute when she introduced it. <laughs> it was an introduction. I was just telling my dog to get off the couch in a very exuberant <laughs> way. I'm gone. <laughs> I don't really rap about it, felt no need to explain it Cause being gay was just a facet of what I was relating Getting sober was more the boulders on my shoulders and waiting I'm a lyrical writing processes back when I first came in To the scene, I mean, I think I'm always keeping it honest As much as anyone can, especially with all this vomit of hate Invading that spray rip to paint upon us I waited a lot of years to explain my story So I'ma relate a little of growing up gay and little And finding out you don't like the same shit as they do in middle school I get confused about liking dudes or but it's not true what will i do if i'm accused joe maybe it's all cool well then grace is on tv so maybe it's all good but why do i feel like god hates me if it is all good it's fucking weird i think i'm queer so maybe beer was the answer and the more that i drink the more i think i'm less of a cancer what kind of 12 year old thinks that i think back and i'm grateful i didn't lean back on that railing in Turkey and succumb to the lurking thoughts of suicide and self hurting. I'm glad I'm not burdened by my internal eyes. I'm a phobic unworthiness. Lift my skinny fist at the heavens like I don't deserve this shit. Like God, I don't deserve this shit. I'd rather drown me buried alive and never heard from again. Yeah, it took a long time for us to get here. So you will recognize all that we have been through. It took a long time for us to get here, so you will recognize all 
all that we have been through a couple years later trying to find a savior someone to rescue me from all of my depression despair and anxiety so one night i find myself inviting a higher being into my life for the first time and i'm like finally I feel peace for the first time. I don't think for the first time in a long time about being deceased in the worst kinds of ways. But in the back of my mind, I know I decided to deny my inner self that I'm gay. But if I pray real hard, they say these feelings will fade. Then my attraction to men will not be taken away. But I never noticed a change and I spent those next to the slave. To a dog but a cause, a lot of empty bottles and veins filled with painkillers. The same feelings of shame, I hate feeling like I just plain hate feeling. So I drank, snorted, shot, smoke, stared at the stillness, slowly falling into a void of oblivion. A little bit of back and forth and a couple of slips. I decided it was time for my life. I can live. It's time for a switch with a flick and switch. Got a glimpse of a kid. I believe in the shit. I believe I'm a kid. I believe I can live. Y'all waving a flag with a rave on the way. I'm taking no shit. Yeah, I'm taking no shit. Orlando 2016, the song is for that. For every gay kid out there who was ever made to feel bad or ashamed of things you can't change, yes, with you I stand. We're equal to humanity, we can never listen. It took a long time for us to get here, so you will recognize all that we have been through. It took a long time for us to get here, so you will recognize all that we have been through, 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 all that we have been through. Sick of lying, sick of dying, I'm sick of using Excuses proven useless to me, diffusing my movement Deluding improvements, illusions, protruding my usefulness to myself Or anyone who chooses to do this but do this Isn't easy, I'm leaning over the median Thinking is it easier to just drink and smoke weed again I'm Sinking in these toxic thoughts of locked in boxes But haven't tossed out my god, I'm scared and nauseous of the consequence I can't comprehend this pain subsiding So I sign and stop my rhymes and wait for lying to find me I've been blinded by the writhing in my chest So I decide to find what's next to satisfy and satiate Hush the quick of it and break up, break up One nine universe, are you listening? Want to kill myself, but I know that my mom will miss me What am I supposed to do? What the fuck is missing? Wrote the song before, man, this rap just feels like a lip sync I'm a fucking crazy, I'm a just depressed I'm smoking cigarettes, my apartment's a fucking mess I guess I'm lazy, but when I wake up, I can't get dressed Goes to almost hope so cause I'm bro I really know it's all a show I'm repeat for you living folk But seriously though I just don't know I've lost my flow My rhythm's changed My skin is strange If it's insane I want to go Every day I work for this. Every day I search for worth inside the sort of worth this match. Do I deserve this gift? When I slide these lyrics from my lips, I feel some sort of purpose in it. Like I was made to do it. Like I was made to fluidly move you out to this music. And I pursue it like love is in the last scene of a movie. Till there's nothing left to say, or one of us is dead. Like Romeo and Juliet, hold me to this. I load and shoot this birth of verses and hope to you that they be congruent and fueling a positive recruitment of juice perfused the users to boost the refusalness of fire. This bazooka of truth is a future Eucharist. I'm alive and I got the fire, bro. Who would guess? All this bullshit I was put that would be used to get you and I to be divided less than kind of guess that I was sent to find dividing lines and rhymes to reconnect. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
da 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 hey da 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 Jaina, my dog came up to listen to that one. She was like pawing at me, like, "Can I come up, please?" I'm like, okay, we're gonna listen to some music together. It was so good that I was taking pictures of myself and setting thirst traps. Oh, <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was I like, I that's the that's the tone of the song. Be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I feel fucking yeah. hot right now. <laughs> Hashtag three dollar Walmart jumpsuit or five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. She's expensive, bitch. Okay. I know. I sprung for the extra two because of the pockets. This is a pandemic, Kimberly. She's rich. Um, <laughs> so you're gonna Thanks, play a little Tom. game. <laughs> Thanks. No, said no one ever. All right, Kimberly Guilfoyle. That's your name. When you did say you that, see? I did. The, I did the fingers. For the podcast listeners, Kimberly was being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> we are going to uh, play a little game. It's a tattoo quiz. Woo! Um, Chris, I know. Yay! Uh, I just got two new tattoos, Becky Joe. I don't know if I told you that. Oh. I'm trying to show you my dog's belly tat. She screams at me. She also has a belly tat. You can't really tell, Chris. It's not queer across her belly, but it is a little blue dot because she's a uh, what? What should we call you? of non-childbearing potential and thriving. That's a what it pumpkin. is. A pumpkin. She's as, as fertile as a pumpkin. Uh, and we, I thought it'd be fun. There, You have so many incredible tattoos. Obviously, the queer across the stomach is something I need to do eventually. Maybe <laughs> in like Comic Sans, make it not a copyright thing. But it, so many incredible tattoos. Like you have work done on your sculpt, like it on your scalp. Like it's incredible. I always so envious kim and i are tatted and jealous so we're gonna i'm going to give you some <laughs> i have four but yours are all it doesn't it's quality not quantity hunty yeah until you're one of those people that has enough tattoos that you can justify sitting in a six hour friday the 13th line for a 13 dollar tattoo those that's when you've i stood in line for a 31 dollar tattoo there she goes 31 oh, the 13th cheap ass studio overcharging you and you know they're getting hundreds of people in a day that's rude that's okay i still got two tattoos for 80 dollars. i ain't mad jesus i mean were you sleeping with them because <laughs> i am now doug <laughs> hey what's the name hey. of my tattoo artist <laughs> oh hi doug uh i get most of my work done from dirty charlie and i know uh, I think a lot of what i gotta do <laughs> I decided that I didn't want something that was on the sheet. I just want your name tattooed on my ass. <laughs> well, what if you just had Doug on your butt? Girl, it's something I would do. Yeah. Because Doug's a good name. I would tattoo it on my ass real quick. It's just Doug funny. Flipping the bird. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, but I'm going to give you a description of a famous person's tattoo. Um you, we, I'll give a couple hints if you need them, and I'm gonna have you see if you can tell me which celebrity has this tattoo. Okay. Uh, the first of which, which I think is hilarious. I also didn't. I don't know. Let me Google if this person is actually British. Um, this actress has the word "minge" tattooed on her ankle, uh, and when questioned about it, she said, "Oh no, she was. She was born in Pennsylvania." Um, yeah, so she has the word minge tattooed on her ankle. It's apparently an inside joke with her best friend. They call each other that. And she basically said, well, in England, it's a term of endearment for me. In England, it means vagina. But where I spend the majority of my time in America, it doesn't really mean anything. Chelsea it's Clinton. She, yeah, she's an actress. Oh, not Ch Chelsea Clinton did a movie, didn't she? <laughs> it's not like Bubbles, <laughs> Bubbles, uh, the, the chimpanzee. Um, I thought you were going to say the Powerpuff Girl. 
Yeah, this actress has worked with Miss Meryl Streep. Oh, um, Reese Witherspoon. So, <laughs> uh, basically, it, it interchangeable white lady moment. It's Amanda Seyfried. Uh, they both have about the same. Oh, range. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Amanda she Seyfried has the word like "minge" that. tattooed on her <laughs> angle. That's great, minge. I live for it, but I it's also in like cute font. It's not like it should say like "live, laugh, love," but it just says. Minge. I wish it was in that font. The what? live, laugh, love. That's what I'm gonna get, Doug. <laughs> live, laugh, minge. Um, live, laugh, Doug. This one's I see this part. This musician has so many dumb tattoos. Uh, he has better at seventy above his knee. And it looks like it was like written by a drunk person who can only do uppercase letter. It's not very cute. And considering how much money this musician makes, there's absolutely no reason for you to have, for him to have such shitty tattoos. He also has son of God on his stomach, but it, there's no spacing. So it looks like son of God. Is it Travis Barker? Ooh. Ooh. I was going to say Steve-O, but then you said musician. And then for some, I, I just said Pete Davidson, but then also not a musician. Yeah, no. It's, it's, a, music Travis music Barker music. is the closest because this artist does have ties, not romantically to the Wait. Kardashian clan, but he does. He's been friends with the Kardashians for a very long time. Oh, Wait. Um... It's so close to Travis Parker, too. He's a little younger than Travis Parker, but not post Malone. No, okay. little, 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 uh, older. Yeah, shit. I don't know. I, it's Justin Bieber. I don't know if Justin Bieber is older than I, post Malone. I would imagine. I think, yeah. I think Justin, Justin Bieber, I forgot that he had tattoos. He has face tattoos. How do you forget? That's, that? Yeah, I know, tattoos. but I still think of him as the little kid with the flip. With a, with a little slippy. I can't stand Justin Bieber. I yeah, can't. it's literally like better at 70 right above his knee. And just oh. and his whole thing is like people ask you all the time why you get tattoos. You're gonna look terrible when you're older. It's like I'm gonna be better at 70. I don't think he thought that one through. There's does no look way. pretty cute, but I love Canada and I hate that for them. <laughs> we we do not stand <laughs> Justin Bieber. Um this one's fun. This musician, she has a series of psychedelic whales. She has a pink orca and like a friendly narwhal that's like covered in polka dots. I love that. Um, and she, I would say that she has made a, like not a tone switch, but super party girl now makes music for herself. I think she was totally. Avril Lavigne? Ooh, ooh! Is this where we get into where we think Avril Lavigne's been replaced? Someone? Oh my gosh! I don't I actually know, believe her. Kesha, but ding, ding, ding! Is it Kesha? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, she has some really cute ones. I didn't know that. Yeah, she's got a psychedelic pink orca and this like super cute little fat narwhal baby with little polka dots, and he's so cute. And I, oh, I'm so fucking cute. I'm here for it. Um, this one's odd. I mean. This person has been a she's been a friend of the gay community for a really long time. I don't necessarily know if it's about her activism or allyship or if it's just that she was bullied by the media at a young age for a really long time. So she kind of understands being outskirted because I really don't know. But she has the word solidarity on her scalp and she got it after the uh, Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. It shook her up really bad. She wanted to show solidarity and allyship. Uh, and she was also a guest judge on at least one episode of Drag Race. Britney Spears. She's she's a she's a, a I she she has made music. Her family is famous, but she's really more of like a host sort of celebrity. It's still not Chelsea Clinton. Is it um, <laughs> is it Frances Bean Cobain? Ooh, that's a great guess, but it unfortunately does not. I wish oh, I should have I should have looked at Frances Bean's tattoos. She's gotten good ones. Should have got her. Uh, it's actually you Kelly Osbourne. Have you heard that song that she's like basically writing about her dad? She's like, I I can't stand to look at my own face because because it, it reminds me of you. To I'm just like, oh, 
<laughs> your whole life i'm just like this whole podcast could be about francis Bean cobain i know if we turn this That's into a francis Bean cobain i'm here for it um it's actually uh, the lovely uh, purple-haired lady, Miss Kelly Osborne. After she's getting most of her tattoos covered up, she got solidarity tattooed on her on her scalp. Mm-hmm. I freaking love her. Did anyone else have her CD when she, she did one. Papa Don't Preach? No, no, we it hate was, her. No, she she's an amazing. She's she's <laughs> amazing, and um, that whole f- I I feel like her and her mom are both like really good people. Um, everybody I know in LA that has worked with Sharon says Sharon's like the nicest, nicest person. And then what I love that before there's not really a lot of fashion like lines that go up into like I think she I think she started a line that is like goes up to 26, size 26. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? I remember watching some interview with her like 10 years ago. And she was like putting out some some fashion line that was like, you know, not plus size, but just like plus size, like, uh, you know, like not excluding plus sizes. You know what I mean? Right. And so I was just like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? So I've never like I guess I've seen I watched I saw her on Drag Race several times. I know that she's at a lot of pride events. I was like, where did we all of a sudden turn Kelly Osborne is it because she had fun colorful hair like when I, I never yeah. like saw her be like a gay I she, icon but I think she, she just hung out I think she just knows a lot of like famous gays and like was just like let's do shit you know what I mean so oh. your dad I'm can't be out to her album after this I don't care what y'all say I'm listening <laughs> to it after I'm into it Kim, 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 I love that. Oh, it's such a good song for her to put out, though. Like her dad's Ozzy. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it made sense. Like, come on. Oh, so good. So I mean, good. I love, she's gorgeous, and I, I, yeah. So I, I just remember thinking, like, when did she become? Like, I don't remember her being like, st- I don't know. But it was like, I just love solidarity on her yeah. head. Um, yes, yeah, so sitting in that inflatable furniture, listening to Kelly Osbourne. Inflatable furniture, no! Oh shit! <laughs> On a hot summer day, and then getting up and still be sitting, but be standing. Yeah, and have like a little badonk <laughs> of yeah. a limited yeah. to squeaky chair. Um, Something like actress. Yeah, she's a she's an actress and model. Uh, she has over 60 Pantone color swatches on her back. It looks like almost like a periodic table of elements. Mm. Oh different colors of Pantone, like it's one to 60 and they're all varying different. This person is also very tatted um, and got kind of famous for being a beautiful model that's covered in tattoos. Oh, Uh, is it (sighs) Rose? um, Yes, Yes. Ruby Rose. Yeah, Yeah. Ruby Rose. (laughs) It's like, I love that they first she's got the most femme face. She's yeah. so feminine in the face, but because she had a, a, a soft butch haircut and it was covered in tattoos, mm. they were like lesbian icon Ruby mm. Rose, which we stand a queen. So love, hot. So hot. I, I loved her so in Orange the New Black. I was like, yes, let's do it. Yes. So, oh, so hot. Baby gays across the country were like, Mom, I don't know what I am, but I like her. <laughs> That's what I'm doing later. I'm watching that show on mute while listening to Kelly Osborne. Mm. There she goes. Sitting in lasagna. my inflatable I'm finding, I'm, I'm finding lasagna tonight. In mm. <laughs> Shit, now I want lasagna. Okay. Um, oh, this one's, I think this one is, and to me, this one is the most not not obvious because like i i see this tattoo in my brain when i think of this actress um very famous actress she has the tattoos of the coordinates where her babies were all born and it's on her arm including her ex-husband's birth coordinates awkward Ooh. is it angelina jolie hell yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> yes! that, that is don't so- even finish <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like I got this. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know you what? Only... See it, right, like it's like the little. She's got the lines and the. I thought she'd be like, I went all the way to India for you, so fucking finish your Cheerios. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope I love she got her Brad's more now. Covered up. Like, what if she got Brad's covered up, or she just like wrote like made in bullshit over it or something? Like, I would love. I would live. 
I uh, only remember like these celebrities as like my favorite, like, um, what is it? Like, like hackers. Like I only remember yes. Angelina Jolie from Hackers. That's the only way, way I want to remember her. You know what I mean? Like that's it. Like, best best guy with the rest. Or girl <laughs> interrupted. I think of her and girl interrupted with her tiny bangs. Oh my god! Always. And underrated okay but yeah. watch hackers and be like oh yeah like she they're running dos like windows 95 <laughs> then it's just like and they think it's like it's sounding so hackers but it's like now you know be like 56a that's not very fast we watched <laughs> yeah. that in school <laughs> you did not yeah. oh i will never forget her in girl interrupted when she's like take one more step and i'll jam this in my aorta and what was like your aorta is in your heart and she goes Good to know. I just put the pen away, like just psychopath. If y'all haven't seen Girl Interrupted in a hot second, get a good cry on. It's a s- solid. Um, you know what? I had a good cry on recently because I was just like, oh, I want to ruin my night. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's the cowboy movie? Oh, Brokeback Mountain. I was just like, I, I hadn't seen this in like ten years. I didn't watch it, and I'm just like, oh, like I hadn't seen. No, not not ten years, like fifteen. Easily. I don't think I watched it since it like came out in theaters, and I was just like, I have, you know, whatever. I remember it, but I don't remember. It. And then I was like, I did not remember, because I was just like on my couch, just like. <laughs> this shit is <laughs> pretty mad triggering. If you like any internalized homophobia, it is my- also that was like I remember the first time in a movie where I was like, they didn't do this for my pansexual ass, but they did. They gave me homoerotic beautiful men. Mm-hmm. And Anne Hathaway's tits. They didn't have to do that, but they did it for me. They That's did kind. It for me. So kind. Uh, I'm, just like, I'm just like, damn, like y'all just got down and dirty, no prep. Like, that's cool. It must have been love because <laughs> I'm well, just like, really ain't the baked beans over the fire. Like, it can't I was like baked that. beans and eggs and like, cool. It was hot. Be like, give me one second. There's a stream right here. Like, <laughs> like, let me wash up first. I guess it was. No. I guess it was, it was snowing though, or something. So I don't know. Which sounds even worse. <laughs> like, no. We won't, we won't get into the drama of white. Anyways, sheep. snowing out. I'm not dirty, dirty. Kim, dirty we don't want to sex. Yeah, we don't want to scare dirty. Kimberly yet. We don't want to scare her. <laughs> it's gonna be fine, sweetie. You're gonna be fine. People are like, Wait. what is this? <laughs> <laughs> you signed up for this. There's three gays here. What the fuck else did you expect? Does it need, do I need to get a can of beans and start a fire outside? Is that the only way that I'm gonna have a sexual experience? Honestly, I'm, maybe. You know, you know what? Or like, that sounds nice. If you I just like had a, a flag or just like was just like I'll just go to a campsite, rent it out, post a flag here for fun. Beans, anyone? Her tent is a rainbow tent. <laughs> and she's blaring Kelly Osborne. That's how you know it's like the call. Yeah. Of <laughs> I hear a mating call. Is that Kelly Osborne? Or just <laughs> come through my window, like on repeat. <laughs> on repeat. Come to my rainbow tent. <laughs> no. We're, I, I swear, I, to me, I swear sitting her, alone, eating a can of beans. No one there. Our producer's probably like, Rebecca, I swear to God. Okay, I have one more celebrity, and then I have two Austin musicians with fun, infamous tattoos. Okay. We'll see. Go if, fast because we're over time. Okay. Who cares? Someone, I, nobody cares. Uh, uh, this one's fun also because I think it might be the easiest one because it's v- very recent. Um, this uh, singer. She got a palm tattoo for her latest album in, uh, I believe. Oh, see, now I'm the one that's ignorant. Lindsay Lohan. Girl, latest album. Lindsay Lohan is doing what in Mykonos? She ain't making any music. What? Okay. I love that show. It gives me anxiety. uh, Sorry. Okay. She has a tattoo in. It's loading. It's loading. It's loading. In Japanese, uh, that's supposed to translate to the title of her latest album, but unfortunately, it reads Japanese barbecue finger. It's delicious. <laughs> and it's literally uh, right here on the palm. Luckily, that's going to go away in about 10 years, but it's right here on the palm of her hand. Is it no? Is it? Is it Gwen Stefani? Oh, I wish it was. You know, that cultural appropriate bitch loves throwing oh things God. on her body. 
No. Uh, I'm trying to think of albums with palm trees on them. No, there's no, no, there's no, no. It's on her palm. Oh, oh you see. <laughs> It's right here on her palm, like right underneath her two middle fingers. And it's supposed to say the title of her album, but it says Japanese barbecue finger. What's the name and Tyler? Well, no, you don't. I guess I'm getting, getting too much away. I know, right? The, I, guess I, I guess I will tell you that she went through a very, very public break, break. off of an engagement. Oh, okay. Wait. Very public. Ariana Grande. Ding! Kim got right. it. Bye. I was gonna say I was gonna say that Kim mentioned her ex earlier, and I was like, "But has anybody ever been with Pete Davidson or Pete been with Ozzy Osbourne other than Karen? Like, how do we? Yeah, she got what was supposed to be seven rings under on her palm, and it says Japanese barbecue finger. And apparently, before she got it fixed, it just said small Japanese barbecue, and they put another uh uh." Like another, they changed the character to mean small finger. So she's like, well, it doesn't say seven rings, but at least it doesn't say small Japanese barbecue. No, it just says Japanese barbecue finger. That's so, I mean, ugh, poor girl. I'm so Stop. hungry. Like, if I you're have, going to get something done in Japanese, go to a I Japanese have, artist. I have Tsunami right there. Love it. Because, just because. Yes. Tsunami. Cause why not? We all we all stand a uh, formidable wave. The, <laughs> the like, I have waves. Yeah, little waves. Come on, know. new tap. Making uh, waves. The two Austin musicians. Uh, this Austin musician has a like a like a, a spade like the card. Like like hearts, clubs, spades, diamonds has a spade on their chest. Kim, do you know? Yeah, I don't want to say. Also, fun fact, we've interviewed them. I live. I stay in it. It's not Caleb. Mm-hmm. Is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, why does it sound familiar? <laughs> All right. yeah. Caleb is always so done up and gorgeous on stage. Like, no one's looking at the tat, yeah. like, and yeah, not very, not very many visible ones. I had to hunt for Caleb wearing a corset where it was like popping out of the top. And I had to reference three other pictures to make sure I was looking at the right thing. I was like, I will get something. Um, we stand, Caleb. Love you, Caleb DeCasper. If you don't know Caleb DeCasper, please refer to our uh, episode of uh, insert number here. Chris edits and just puts a number over my mouth. Can't can't recall, but we'll post it in the comments. Hopefully, yeah. uh, we're live. It's okay. we're live. Uh, this one's fun. Um, this artist has self-love on his neck. Oh, what? My also, he also my just head. got a Black Lives Matter tattoo on the side of his head. What? Really? Mm -hmm. We've oh, um, uh, Jonathan. Uh, Is oh. last name starts with a K, I want to say? No. Okay. Oh, close. Uh, the, yeah, he's covered in tattoos. We've had him on the show way too many times. We <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> never. I love that man enough. so much. Scott Collins. It's Yay. Mr. Scott Collins with the self-love on his neck. We all stand Scott Collins. What a peach. Love him very much. Oh, and I was going to be like, who's the... Austin host who has the word soup on the back of her arm. It me. It me. I have Scott you, you Collins. Soup? Hey. Soup. Hey. Soup. 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 I love soup. I love soup. I know who does fucking love I was, soup. I was sick the last like four days. Like legit, like, like I was like, I still I still can't really I have a terrible like inner ear thing right now. Like I'm still congested. So like me trying to sing and rap, like I can. It's like I hear myself like 90% yep. here and like 30% here. So I'm like, kid, don't know what I sound like. Hopefully <laughs> it sounds okay. <laughs> just like, uh, uh, but like legit have been like eating soup, just like ra I'm like, mmm, ramen, ramen tatsia, and then some fun. I'm like, ooh, I love soup. Soup all day. I fucking all love day. soup. My friend Eli doesn't like soup. Well, Eli, Eli can fall down some stairs onto a couch. <laughs> With some soup. 
<laughs> you can fall down some stairs onto a couch. <laughs> Soft landing. With, and we'll all we'll bring you soup and you'll like And then it. we'll all cover you in soup. But it won't be hot because that's mean. Yeah, just cold soup. Just spicy gazpacho right in your face. Just soak it also, out. Just suck it out of the coach the cushions. I, I would. I would. Oh. I, I, I don't care about shirt. a Klondike bar. The things that I would do for soup. What would you do for some soup? For a kind of soup. <laughs> like, oh, see, there you go. Now for she's some yum yum soup. Oh, there you <laughs> for go. some yum yum soup. This, this is what Ariana Grande's hand tattoo looks like. And tell me that hand doesn't look like a mannequin hand. The hand looks. Wait. <laughs> That's, spooky. That's not. That's like very spooky. Like, is that a that is scary? Like I can see you just can't. I mean, the computer is really not like it's bad, but OK, we're going to go. Chris just texted me. Let's go to the final video. OK, dad. OK. What was Ms. the te- told what, you. who was the artist? Um, I, want it. I know. Right. Who would do that? I don't think they probably don't want their dang name. Yeah. No, 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 no. The person, the tattoo. Oh, that's Ariana Grande. Ariana. That's, no, that's the one who has. Self love and oh, that's Scott Collins. It's Scott Collins. Oh, I got it. <laughs> you actually, this may be the only time that uh, an artist has actually one hundred percent passed a quiz. They're never, they're never easy. But you like easily got a B plus on that one. That's I felt like I did a pretty good. I was like pretty surprised because like I don't know things. I'm so mad we didn't talk about things. Chelsea Clinton's tattoos, but. No we one is talking about time. Chelsea Clinton's tattoos. Why no. not? Uh, because we have to go to a video, Kim. I'm going to talk about it to my dog. Kim's going to tweet about Chelsea Clinton's tattoos. Well, we're all going to watch a music video from Chris Conde. And if you're having a good time, please, 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 please tip them on Venmo. Tip them on PayPal. The Both of the links are in the ticker below. They're also in the bio to this episode. So please be sure to, yes, use the fist bump emoji. And the unicorn, and we are going to have a badass time. We're going to hear, uh, this is our last live song. If you would like to hear another song and a couple more questions, you're going to have to join us on Patreon and see that in a couple of days. Um, okay, Scott Collins says Chelsea Clinton tattooed him twice. Now we know this is a damn lie. I'm going to uh, marry that man. Someday. Uh, but this is the uh, last, and we're going to cut the live feed and record the Patreon stuff, but we're going to hear uh, one more video, uh, so stay tuned. And... Uh, We'll be right back. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Wait. Am I doing video? Or am I playing a song? Every day is a day we begin again Every day is an intricate rhythm 
to me The enigma of everything ever we're fitting together Connected by energy Every day I'm alive in the energy Every day I can find my inner peace 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 Every day I can Every day Oh, come through. Oh, shit. That's an incredible video. Thank you. Who who uh, shot and produced that video? Uh, Wayne Fowl. Um, he's a pretty well-known uh, producer in San Antonio, but he's done, like, really big, like, Swedish, like, scene core bands, too. Oh, like, like, stuff, you know, it's weird. Like, <laughs> like, it, yeah, like, stuff, very like dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, but then like oh. two million views like millions of views yeah. you know like, what <laughs> like who are you but he's a friend of mine and um he's just got a great eye and um so yeah eli wants to know if you're wearing swoveralls so. and i was like what the fuck is a swoveral oh my friend hannah jones is sponsored she's got swoveralls like sweat so what? Overalls. It's sweatpants overalls. I don't have any. I'm just wearing my Atlantis t-shirt. Oh, in the video. But in the in the video. Oh, in the video. I'm just like, um, they're not so overalls. They're overalls from Torrid. Yes. I have overalls from Torrid and I love them. And they're I got they're they were overalls. Yeah, they were mispriced and I got them for like $20. Hell yeah. I'm such a I've spent way too much do you okay they did a betsy johnson collab last year i don't want to talk about it <laughs> i love betsy johnson so much i bought i spent i was irresponsible with my money i was not bought. i bought underwear and that was yeah. it <laughs> oh shit I I was like if i do this i, I bought have a like, job a <sighs> suit. i bought I, anyways, next topic. <laughs> I'm so jealous. This is the uh, part in our show where we like to ask you, where can people follow you? Where can people support you? How can people yeah. get this new album? Where can they see you next? Tell us uh, where we can stock you slash support. Tight. Awesome. Okay. Um, I am, um, you can 
You can find me at chrisconde.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-C-O-N-D-E.com. It'll have all the links to everything ever. Um, but I'm on Instagram at Chris Conde the Rapper, Facebook, Chris Conde the Rapper, Twitter, Chris Conde. Um, I just put out a new record on Fake Four Records. Um, it's called Engulfed in the Marvelous Decay. Um, it's available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, all of them. And I have an album release show coming out um, this uh, next month, September um, 8th. Hold on. <laughs> fact check, fact check. Fact checking. Um, it's September 18th. Uh, no, September. Yeah, September 18th. Um, sorry. I <laughs> September 18th. September 18th. Come on down. <laughs> Uh, with uh-huh. Thurber, um, it's going to be an awesome show outside at Little Darlin. Um, oh, I love Little Darlin. Bring your mask, social distance, be careful because we care about you. So yes. care about, you, about each other. Um, and yeah, but if you, you literally type the name, like you'll find yeah. something. And um, yeah. I'm a, like, buy the I'm vinyl. Kidding. I don't have an OnlyFans, but maybe I will someday. We're making one now. Yeah, stay Little t- do you now. This isn't a podcast. I'm filling my OnlyFans right now. It's just, it's an OnlyFans, but it's just you and Kim wearing overalls in different places. Eating soup. Eating soup! Oh shit, I'm on the band. Does list. anybody really want this calendar? Because I want that wall calendar. Yeah. Of us but- just in overalls all around town eating different kinds of soup. I wanted those rip away Only one Kim. daily. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my only soup. Um, no, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, we are going to pop off the live feed here right quick, and we're going to record some exclusive content for y'all. So if you would like to see more, because I know you do, uh, please hit on over to cimp.live and support us on the patrons. Uh, we've got hundreds of hours of content for y'all. We're talking 200 hours of content. It is wild we have been doing this for a long ass time so you can get lost uh and i guarantee goddamn you you'll find one of your favorite artists on here we've made lots of friends over the last couple of years so please head over to cimp.live and support us uh that's how we can continue to bring the show to you and we are going to go back to live shows as soon as it is safe as soon as we can do that and feasibly get everyone in and out in a safe manner we are ready to do it if you have an open air location and you want to book us Call us. Uh, we'd love to go there. We'd love to do a safe, socially distant show. Um, and everyone, please purchase Chris's album uh, and support Chris as well, because it is very important to support your local musicians. They're the ones entertaining you. So if you guys want to see more, stay tuned on the Patreon. Um, we're going to say bye to y'all on Facebook, but we'll see you very soon. And tip Chris, tip Chris on Venmo and PayPal. It's in the ticker below. Use the music Fist for some emoji. Unicorn. And- the unicorn fist bump unicorn fist a unicorn whatever you get from that we're gonna go to this today uh so give a big round of applause for chris conde and their incredible talent thank you so much for joining us today thank you so thank much you. for having me it was so awesome you guys are amazing i appreciate you facebook we're gonna go have a private conversation if you want to see more go to cmp.live we love you bye facebook everyone get vaccinated so i can hug musicians bye yes. Kim can fist a unicorn I love this. Unicorn. She does this. I love, I love to fist you a unicorn. You I love to fist a unicorn.